everyone. <clears throat> Thanks for tuning in today. <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate everyone who's been tuning in the last few days and keeping up with us as we do this live every day at noon this week. I um have been really enjoying this series. Like it's so weird because I go live all the time, but I always avoid going live on my business pages. I have so many um, different brands and businesses, and I never go live on these pages. And um, it's kind of cool to just like show my face and be the brand of my business, but it, instead of just posting all the time, like it's kind of cool. So um, this week we've been discussing uh, the anthology, the strength of a woman. And we've talked about um, three women's stories so far. So we have went over the story of Sharon Burks, um, which was Change Your Mindset, Change Your Life. And Sharon had, in the span of six years, dealt with the sickness of her son, the untimely death of her father, and her newlywed husband. And in the case of the death of her newlywed husband, she lost everything because she was losing, she was changing her life dynamically to move from the United Kingdom to the United States. And she had quit her job, sold a home, sold a car, invested a lot of money into the move. And literally, like the day before she was headed to the new world to go settle down with her new husband, he fell into a, a coma and had a heart attack. And within months, he was dead. Sharon had to pick herself back up, find her strength. And she did. And she left us a great guide of how we can do the same. And it was an amazing story. Um, in that following day, we talked about Robin's story. And Robin um, shared the story of being a young girl who grew up <clears throat> extremely abused in a household that had domestic violence and she started being sexually abused, raped actually, at the age of five. And her mother hadn't told her that her father wasn't her father. So she had a lot of conflicting emotions when she found out that he wasn't even her father. And the family was able to finally break free. And Robin was able to find strength and love and she actually says that she regained her strength through the love of her stepfather, which to me was a beautiful thing to find healing in the place where you got your pain, which was the love of a father for her. Um, the following day, we talked about Amanda's story. And Amanda battled not only being legally blind, but the invisible illness of autism. And invisible illnesses are something that plagued my life forever because I don't look sick, but I really am. And so I've often had people not understand why I am the way I am or do the things I do. And sometimes I don't even understand, you know, things like um, the PTSD and the anxiety, the depression. Um, for me, even the physical pain, like the fibromyalgia, some people, they suffer with lupus or um, things like other autoimmune diseases, <clears throat> things like Crohn disease. You know, and these invisible illnesses, they cause just as much visible trauma and pain than as a visible illness. And today, today we're going to talk about another invisible illness, depression. As we go into Sierra's story. And Sierra. Uh, let's see. Sierra writes a story titled How I Made It Through, Freeing Myself from Depression. So we're going to talk about Sierra's story today. But before we do, you know, I'd be a little disorganized sometimes. Getting my whole life there. But before we do, I like to read the discussion, I mean, the introduction every day just in case someone's um, finding this video for the first time and they don't know what we're talking about. I like to um, make sure that they know what we're talking about. 
So the introduction <clears throat> to the strength of a woman. says, the strength of a woman is unmatched by most forces of nature. There have been news reports of women lifting cars to free their trapped child. Incredible, right? For centuries, women have been the backbones of their families and communities both. Yet the cry of the women who nurture all is often unheard. Lucy for strength, she is not allowed to be weak. Women must bear the children and bury them. Bury the ones who brought us into the world and even our spouses. We nurture children who grew up who grow up to resemble in no way the child we born loved. No matter the adversity, we're taught that it's just life and real women deal with it. The women in this book did more than just deal with it. They made it work for them. Life happens. There's ups and downs, and some of the downs can almost kill you, literally. But they're still here. Not only are they here, they're standing strong to tell their stories in hopes of encouraging another woman to find strength through her own struggles. When I connected with this group of women across the US and UK, I knew that I had found a special bunch and I was honored to be able to share their stories of smiling in the face of adversity. The strength of a woman can be found in her smile, the shine of her eyes, the swing in her step, and even her laughter as the world crumbles around her. To look at many women, you never imagine the struggles they're facing or have had to overcome. Women wear the mask of survival well. Our hope, is to touch at least one woman's life and give her the courage to push forward towards her own happiness. And so today, we're going to talk about Sierra's story, which is a story of reclaiming her life from depression. And so Sierra says, I've dealt with depression throughout my life. Oh, sorry, before we get started, my mind. I left you with some questions in the beginning of this to think about as we go through this. And the questions I left you with today, um, or things to think about, are not deciding sometimes allows time for life to decide for you. How often have you put off something that you knew you needed to deal with in a situation only worsened due to your own inactivity? And the other question I left you with is have you ever felt stuck? Have you ever felt yourself not acting on your dreams and goals because you didn't even know how to start? What did you do to get unstuck? And as we go along, I'll stop and I'll ask a few more questions. But these are the things that I think we should think about as we go along um, the story, because I think those are the things that we can all relate to as we talk about Sierra's story, is how not deciding Sometimes life takes the decisions away from us and how we feel when we're stuck and how we get unstuck. So, Sierra. Sierra says, I've dealt with depression throughout my life. It was at its worst when I was a child and it crept into my young adult life. I realized that there was a way out but it took work to make it to the other side. I had the mentality of what was me. Due to the fact that I could not accept what my life had currently become, I figuratively curled up into a ball. I felt that my life would be in a nut, that my life would be, that that would be my life in a nutshell for years to come. In a way, it was, given my complacency. It was as if I mentally spoke it into existence. The mindset, that mindset kept me in a dark place and it did not give me a way out. It was as, as if I gave myself permission to stay stuck and the only way I was going to get out was to take it for what it was and run with it. I ran with my depression. I dealt with it head on. I did not hide my feeling. The tears I was shed almost on a daily basis did not allow me to. This sensitivity I possess ultimately became a blessing for me instead of a curse because I'm relatable to my fellow human beings and see them for who and what they are. Depression can be very de debilitating because it can basically take over one's mind, dictate your worth. And in this world, wait a minute, depression can be very debilitating because it can basically take over one's mind dictate your worth in this world and have you wondering what your purpose is for being here i highlighted that i highlighted that 
because I think that that's something that we take for granted. Like we say, oh, I'm depressed and I have depression. Even when we get diagnosed as um, legally depressed, I think we take for granted that depression is debilitating at times. And we, we start to feel bad for not being able to be what is normal. Um, but think I think that recognizing that depression is debilitating and that it's not something wrong with you, but it's actually an illness that you have. And like any illness, we have to treat it, you know? She said depression can be very debilitating because it can basically take over one's mind. It dictates your worth in this world and have you wondering your purpose for being here. Like that's so important because it's true. Like your mind will trick you into thinking you're not as valuable as you are. It will trick you into thinking you don't have the support you have. It will trick you into thinking that your gifts aren't meant to be shared. It will trick you into thinking that you're not as beautiful as you are. The, your mind is a powerful thing. And it will cause you to decide your place before anyone else gets a chance to. She said, I can speak on the subject candidly because I've been there. The darkness is real and it can be mentally crippling. The work that must be put in to overcome your dark place in life is essential. And it can be transformative in many ways. I would say it took me upwards of 18 years to get to the other side of depression. It can be constant or it can be sporadic. I've experienced both. It is draining and simply a dream killer. She said, I specifically remember a time when I was struggling with depression and after and a dark cloud followed me everywhere I would go. There was no escape in the sadness that illuminated my life for so long. Depression was a big factor in my life. I could not see beyond those negative thoughts that helped me back from reaching my full potential. Hmm. I'm going to stop for a second. Sierra spent years living in a state of woe with me. She realized that her negative self-talk and her that she was speaking her negativity um, into her life. Has your negative self-talk or self-image ever kept you from living the life you desire and deserve? She said, eventually, I took steps towards healing myself mentally. First, I had begun to pray more so that I could become closer to God. She said, I began counseling so that I could purge myself of those negative thoughts. I wrote to myself to express myself, express my opinions in a positive way. And I had belief in myself that I would make it through. I worked through low self-esteem. Hmm. She understood that being alone with her thoughts was an unhealthy place for her. And she sought help. She sought it through religion. She sought it through counseling. She started to write. When you feel yourself slipping into your depression, do you allow yourself to sit with it? Or do you ask for help? Do you seek religious counsel? Do you go to a therapist? Do you talk to a friend? Like, how are you getting through? She said, dealing with that for years took me to a place where I needed to look at what was invading my emotional space. I had to change it. There was one thing that I was that was really bothering me a lot and it consumed me daily. It seemed as if there was nothing I could do about it until I concluded that it was me holding me back. I would always speak about what I wanted to do, but I would never act on it. I talked a good game, but that's all I did. And talk never gets you anywhere. It's all about what you do with the gifts. It was difficult for me to make moves because I didn't know where to, where to start. Thankfully, God placed individuals in my life that were working through the same things and they were ahead of me. So I was able to follow the blueprint and find my own way. I'm grateful that God has placed these people in my life. She said there was a point in my life 
where I wanted to give up. I saw my life going nowhere. And I thought that was it, a lot of nothingness. I would try to push myself to do more, but that didn't work. So I stayed stuck in one place, mentally, as well as physically. I felt like there was no way out. I struggled with the question of why me? Why did this have to be my life? This was a never ending story, or so I thought. Given my mental state, I felt that this was it for me because I didn't take the necessary steps to travel through what it seemed to be the hardest time in my life. That was gonna be it for me if I did not move. I'm aware that being still is okay, but being complacent is not. There was a time when complacency was a part of my everyday life and it kept me at a standstill. I saw so many people around me thriving in life. They were going places due to their hard work and that is something I wanted to do but I did not know the depression I dealt with would not allow me. Depression did not allow me to be happy. Depression did not, uh, did not allow me to be successful, nor did it allow me to be who I was born to be because it took over my emotional state and it drove my feelings. The moment I decided to change my outlook on life is when life changed for me drastically. I chose to do something new. I was sitting at home one day and something about meditation came up. Although I've always known about meditation, I've never tried it. However, one day I decided to try it and do something different. I remember the first time doing meditation. It gave me a feeling of freedom and an uncluttered mind, and I vowed to keep it up. At least that's what I told myself. I did not keep it up. Years passed by, and I didn't give meditation a second thought until I ran across an app called Headspace that I have now downloaded to my phone. I use it twice a day. It's a daily routine and it's changed my life for the better. I never knew an app on the phone would be my saving grace. I knew at that moment that God had decided to show up and show me another way. Meditation has given me peace and that was something I had been searching for for years and my mind is quiet. It's no longer cluttered with negativity, sadness, and self-doubt very optimistic about my life. I believe there's a greatness in my future. I believe there's more out there for me to grasp when it's at arm's reach and it's right in front of my face. I must go get it for it will not be handed to me. At one point, I acted as if success would be placed at my feet. I was at that place because I did not know what it took to truly prosper in life. I wanted to be successful, but I didn't even know what it took to be a success. I must stop right there because Sierra turned to meditation, which allowed her to silence her thoughts and be in the moment. She used the app, so there was no need to go to a class or a set routine for meditation. Have you taken steps to combat your depression and or negative self-talk? If so, are you taking care of yourself physically? Because depression affects us physically and mentally. Sierra goes on to say, it takes hard work and discipline. I'm working on these aspects of my life. For success to be a stable and constant fixture in my life, I cannot backtrack. I must keep moving forward. This has helped me a lot in my recent endeavors and it helped me to grow in many ways. Emotionally, I'm not in the same place. Mentally, I can see past yesterday, deal with the present, and look to my future with a smile on my face. As I navigated through depression, I was able to find strength and resiliency within myself. I mean, sure, it took me a while to get to this place, but I have arrived. I realize now that what I went through and the darkness that surrounded me was not just for me. It was so I could help someone else. It helped me understand that my dark days were not in vain. God has something for us, and we are given a mission to fulfill it. But to get to the mission, we must listen and obey. And on the other side of the coin, there's prosperity. We must put in the time and effort it will take to get there and not waver because our lives may depend on it. She said, I, I wanted to talk about depression because it's something I personally dealt with and I know I'm not the only one. It's almost if it, as if the world tells us we are weak if we have something um, that we experience in life that makes us women. She said, weak as if 
as if this is something we experience in life or have experienced. Oh, depression. Okay. We are treated with contempt for simply experiencing a human condition. We expect it to lock ourselves behind closed doors because it is unacceptable to be vulnerable. It is sad that this is what the world we live in has come to be, cold and callous. There are many people who have gone through rough patches in their lives. I write to let them know that they are not the only ones and there's light at the end of the tunnel. Depression does not have to have the last word. It can be a stepping stone for what is to come. Brighter days are ahead and this too shall pass. The road towards one healing may be a long road, but the process may seem never ending and it may and must be done. Healing must be attended to for life and will not be fully attained until you let go. She said the road towards one healing may be long and the process may seem never ending, but it must be done. Healing must be attended to for life. Like people think they're gonna be healed. They're gonna get over something. Like healing an illness that has no cure must be attended to for life. She said it was and is at times difficult to process certain things, take it for what it is and essentially let go. This is something I'm still working on, to not allow mess to weigh me down. I'm aware that within this life, I have much to do and so many things to accomplish. But if I allow darkness to reign over me, I will not prosper in whatever it is I want and need to do. I realize there are many people that have feelings of defeat and despair and I get it. There are many instances in life that can take you down a path of darkness, but it's up to you to have strength, to steer yourself in the right direction. There's beauty on the other side of depression. And if you look even deeper, there's beauty in depression. Hmm, that's real. She said there's beauty on the other side of depression. And if you look even deeper, there's beauty in depression. She said, depression allows you to realize the strength you have once you've overcome it. Depression can steal one's happiness. It can steal one's joy and it can steal ambition if you let it. Depression will eat you alive if you give it permission. If you give it permission. She said, I've come across many people in life that have dealt with the struggles of depression and oftentimes they see no way out. And sadly, they may use and abuse substances to give them a way out. Seeing and knowing this firsthand steered me in the direction of expressing myself through art. My drug of choice is the written word, and it has been since I was a child. I began writing to escape the mental space I was in. I could not foresee that I would still be writing today. Writing has always been a part of my life. It helped me learn so much about myself along the way. I learned that vulnerability is necessary for growth. If I never went through the darkness, I would not be where I am today. So I thank depression. I understand that a lot of people won't understand where I'm coming from when I say I thank depression. But depression saved my life. I would not be where I am today had depression not shown me that I can make it through anything. She said the anthology The Strength of a Woman has really been a blessing in my life. And I'm so grateful that I have a chance to be part of such greatness. I hope my story resonates with someone and helps them make it through. And I hope them realize, hope it helps them realize that they are not alone in this thing called life. Depression has plagued my life for the majority of my life. And growing up in a black household, it was ignored. We were told we didn't have nerves, like you can't be, um, you can't have a problem in a black household. It's just not in the 80s not in the early 90s, maybe now we're a therapy generation. But it was ignored. They would just say you get your life together, you know, or stop faking or, you know, stop being a problem. And so I, I totally relate to spending years in that depression because we didn't grow up in a society where we could talk about it like we do now. I spent years deep in my deep depression. Also, you know, now I deal with the sporadic depression, but that deep everyday depression sat with me for 
a long time. I totally relate. And so I want to go over because Sierra left us with a few quotes that we should make sure that we keep with us. She said, depression can be very debilitating because it can basically take over one's mind, dictate your work in this world, and have you wondering what your purpose is for being here. But it does not have to have the last word. It can be a stepping stone for what's to come. And I think that's beautiful. Like to know that we must acknowledge that it is more than being sad. It can be a debilitating illness. It can take over, but it doesn't have to have the last word. She also said the road towards healing oneself may be long and the process may seem never ending, but it must be done. Healing must be attended to for life. Like, I, I think that's the most important takeaway of the whole part, that healing must be attended to for life. Sierra said, I think that our takeaways from this is that she struggled with depression for over 18 years, trying multiple forms of traditional and alternative therapy along her healing journey to find her peace. Like, she didn't stop at one. How often have we said, oh, I tried talking to a therapist, but that didn't work for me, and then that was it. Or I tried yoga, but that didn't work for me. Or I tried meditation, but that didn't work for me. Like, you have to be relentless and pursuing what it is that will be your healing. Healing is something that must be attended to for life and you must be relentless on your journey of healing. Sierra got unstuck and was unable and was able to start achieving her goals after she changed her mindset. She sought out mentors and helped her plan out the steps to accomplish her goals. Like going to get religious counsel going to see a therapist, finding people to help her with her goals when she found these individuals that were placed in her life. It's important that we not try to do everything alone. Depression will have us thinking that we are alone and that there is no way for us to get help or support. But there are people who are willing to help and support you. Most of the time, they just don't know you need to help. Depression will do that to you. So tomorrow, we'll be back to discuss my story. We'll be back to discuss my story tomorrow. Is it my story tomorrow? No. Oh, thank you. It's not my story. Tomorrow, we come back to talk about our anonymous contributor. That's why the name wasn't in my head. Duh. Tomorrow, we come to talk about our anonymous contributor. So we have an anonymous contributor to this book. And I'm very grateful that she shared her story because I personally know her. And she hasn't shared her story publicly with anyone. And, you know, I said to her, people need to know that there is strength that can be derived from your situation. People need to know that there is love after your situation. Um, people need to know that you can reclaim your life from this. And even though you're not comfortable sharing with the people in your life, and you're not comfortable telling people your story, like, I need you to share it in this book. And I won't tell nobody who you are. Like, that's just how I had to carry it. Because her story matters to me so much. Because she was a young lady just living life, trying to be normal. And she went to the eye doctor one day. And the eye doctor saw some things going on. And then she was diagnosed with HIV. And she tried to kill herself. And a lot of things happened after that, which we'll discuss tomorrow. But because my mother died of HIV, you know, it's a story that resonates with me. Because people think when they have a long-term STD, like, my mother died of HIV. I've had herpes since I was 18, you know, 17. 
And because people with long-term STDs, they often feel invaluable and unworthy of love. And they think their lives are over. Like specifically, they're going to be social pariahs and their love life is over. Um, the story of our anonymous contributor really touches me because she found love. And I told her, I said, it resonates with me because my mother, you know, too, found love after HIV. Um, and she was in love with a man who spent time with her and lived with her and loved her and took her to church and around his family and everything until the day she died. You know, he was committed to her. And, you know, myself, I've been blessed and lucky to have great relationships. Even now, and I'm in a stable two-year relationship. Like, your life doesn't end for STD, you know? Um, so tomorrow, we discuss the story of our anonymous contributor. And we'll be back to talk about her story tomorrow at noon, Eastern Standard Time. And um, I appreciate everyone who's been tuning in. If you were on our mailing list um, before we started this and you woke up to a recap from yesterday of Sierra's lesson, I'll be sending out a recap from, I mean, of um, yesterday we did Amanda. You got a recap of Amanda's lesson. And I'll be sending out a recap tonight um, for the morning of Sierra's lesson that we should take away um, the words of wisdom, the things to ponder. And um, I look forward to coming back tomorrow to talk about our anonymous contributor and how she reclaimed her life from suicide attempt after finding out she was HIV positive. So I'll see you at noon tomorrow. Bye.